Those Were the Days is filmed before a live internet audience. And welcome to Those Were the Days, the place where you come in after a long day, pop up in a can of your favorite beverage, oh, yeah. sit down on that old comfy couch, and just chill out under the blanket of nostalgia and watch some classic TV. Then we keep chilling out as we talk about it through a modern lens to see if that blanket still covers you up and keeps you fluffy warm. Or is it filled with a bunch of holes that you keep catching your big toe and rip open more and, you know, the draft just comes right through it. We'll see. So we're talking about recasting. Last week, we talked about Doctor Who and how recasting made was made a plot point. This week, we're talking about the sitcom Roseanne and the recasting of Becky in season six. Now, before we get into it, I can't do all this TV talk by my lonesome. I need some co-hosts to help me. First, we have my pal Travis. So it is the 25th anniversary of my state finals winning cross country team. And we're going to have a big party. And I look as though I was two thirds of that team by myself at this point. Um, but I still want to look good in front of all of them. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go out and run like a thousand miles between now and next week. All right. See ya. <laughs> all right. And next we have good old boy, Steven. All right, now this is a sitcom that shows life as I know it. Uh, wood paneled walls, flannel shirts, cans of food hanging out all over the place in the kitchen, shoes on the bed. Wait, shoes on the bed? No one has their shoes on the bed. Mom never let us wear shoes on the bed. All right, suspension of disbelief is broken. I'm out. <laughs> and... We have our very own blanket queen, Amy. Oops. Okay, so unfortunately, Amy is out this week, but we are not recasting her. So that's right. That's not happening here. Only we're just one talking about Amy. recasting. We'll just hold hold down the fort best we can. Okay, so we're talking about Roseanne. So let's do what we do and see what your history is with this show. Steven, let's start with you. Well, uh, Audie, I have no familiarity with Roseanne at all. Uh, despite this being a show that was designed to cater to, you know, the down-home blue-collar worker, when shows before this were very much different, or or a lot of the alternatives you had were, were well, look at this successful family in the massive house, because this is a giant cast that requires a huge set. Uh, Roseanne was very, very different at the time, and I, and I know... I think we watched it. I just don't think I watched it. So I messaged my mom today because I could have sworn we didn't like this show. And by we, I mean my family didn't like this show. I don't know what we watched. But she said she loved it uh, when we watched it. So evidently, I was just playing Nintendo in my room or doing something else <laughs> when this was on. I missed it completely. What about you, Travis? So we definitely watched Roseanne in my house growing up. Uh, my mom actually worked for the local ABC affiliate for a while when I was a kid, and this and Roseanne ran on ABC. So mm -hmm. we watched a, a good amount of Roseanne. I love it's it's where my fondness for John Goodman came from. Uh, mm -hmm. Initially, was watching him here, and then following him to basically any movie that his name appeared in. I was like, I will watch that. I didn't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely watched a lot of it. Very much enjoyed the show at the time. Um, haven't watched it since, but uh, I do remember it being, it was, it was that show that was about a blue collar family. Both parents worked, uh, kids were home alone at times. It felt like people that I knew where other sitcoms always felt like I might have known some of them at school, but I never spent time with the families like that. This felt like a family that I would have spent time around growing yeah. up. Yeah. And I'm in the same boat. We watched it. My whole family, I remember watching it. I remember my parents really enjoying it and appreciating, you know, it being a blue collar family and stuff. Um, Julia, my wife was telling me about, uh, they watched it for forever until they had to move in with their grandma and grandpa and he forbid it. Uh, I think mainly because after Roseanne did the 
national anthem and a bunch of people turned on her after that um oh yeah if you, if you don't know what i'm talking about youtube that um i don't know what people were expecting when they asked roseanne Barr to sing the national anthem but you got what i would have expected so i don't know <laughs> why people were surprised Mistake number one in that whole situation was let's get Roseanne Barr to sing the national anthem at a sporting mm-hmm. event. Who, whoever greenlit that idea immediately lost their job and rightfully so. Right. So, again, we're talking about Roseanne sitcom on ABC. It aired from October 18th, 1988 until May 20th, 1997. Had nine seasons. Wow. And then was briefly revived in 2018 for a 10th season. Yeah, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but it was based on the comedy of Roseanne Barr. Um, uh, like you were talking about, Stephen, up to that point, there had been plenty of shows with working mothers, um, but few of them, few treated them as anything else than just a partner to the dad helping out. Mm-hmm. Um, but with this show with Roseanne, she was the central voice, the central character. Um, and again, uh, this was really lauded for its depiction of a blue collar American family with two working parents working outside of the home. Uh, one other thing I, I found interesting that was noted was that both lead characters were noticeably overweight mm-hmm. without their weight being a target of jokes at all. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. a major plot point to make the, make the jokes about their weight. There were occasional, right. but, but it wasn't a huge it wasn't glaring mm-hmm. at all, which was, you know, it was nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the other thing about Roseanne is that this show did not shy away from heavy topics, like, no. at all. Um, and Roseanne said that she stated that there were issues that working class Americans exp- experience in their everyday lives and that very few scripted programs address them. Um, there was a lot of... Um, stuff about gay characters and issues in the show because Roseanne, her real life brother and sister were gay. So she was like, that's something I know. That's something I've had to deal with. I'm not going to shy away from that. I remember an episode where her sister, Jackie was being uh, physically abused by her partner. And that was a real storyline. And Mm -hmm. I really remember it because Dan walks out and goes and beats the crap out of him, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, So, um yeah it was a, a a heck of a show and it you know the family consisted of roseanne who was married to her husband dan and they had three kids becky darlene and dj um and then later in the series there was a fourth child jerry garcia connor <laughs> great um but it was it's funny because it happened in later seasons and then ended up being retconned uh in the revival a lot oh, of wow. stuff um, yeah. and then the, the other constant was, uh, Roseanne's sister, Jackie. Um, and then there was various boyfriends of the girls that came in and out of the se- series, different, um, guest stars and stuff, uh, that had roles here and there. So yeah, it had a heck of a run for nine seasons from 88 to 97 was revived for a 10th season in 2018. That revival lasted one season. Because at the time, Roseanne Barr decided to go off on Twitter and made a bunch of very racist and Islamophobic remarks. Um, And uh, specifically towards a female member of the Obama administration. And it was it was it was bad. Um, Roseanne did ending careers since 2007. Right. (laughs) Um, Now, Roseanne did make attempts to apologize but i mean at that point it was too late um yeah so basically abc was like this is still something we could do something with so they basically killed off roseanne and refocused the series on just the connors um initially i think they were trying to kind of focus on uh the daughter darlene but they they kind of twisted and just kind of made it about everybody um, and not focus on her as much. Um, and, it, you know, the Connors just finished its fifth season. <laughs> wow. And is renewed for a sixth. So 
I that didn't blows even know. My mind, yeah, honestly. I didn't. I had yeah. no, what is it on? Is it on, what is it streaming it's somewhere? Still on. It's uh, yeah, I think it's still ABC doing it. So holy cow! All right, um, I had no idea. Yeah, I knew. It, yeah, I remember that the Connors existed. I didn't realize yeah. it been. It still was running, and it's five years, five mm-hmm. seasons worth of that. That's kind of crazy. And they're they're still, you know, doing the kind of working class family, still not shying away from tough issues and stuff. So the stuff I've seen here and there of it, it's been pretty interesting. So so what happened to Rose? Did she get hit by a bus in the in the story, or what? What's the deal? <laughs> so she went in for a knee surgery. And died. Oh, okay. Was, yeah, a good way. And <laughs> they later uh, revealed that it was actually as a result of overdosing on op- opioids that she was addicted to because of her knee. Oh, okay. So, um, interesting way to handle it. Like, yeah. not just hit by a bus, but like, hey, here's something, you know, in, in killing off this character and getting rid of this actress, we actually tackled something that, you know, a lot of people deal with these days. Yeah. And to see it go another four seasons post Roseanne is really impressive. Cause like mm-hmm. we go all the way back to all in the family when Edith left or died, but she was old, you know, mm-hmm. not right. the actual lady who played Edith, but the storyline Edith right. died. They went to Archie's place, you know, mm-hmm. which spun off of that, but it didn't last as long. Like it loses its charm when you lose like all the, the, the characters that make it what it is. I'm, I'm super yeah. impressed that, it's hung on without Rose. It shows it has something more than just that individual actress and comedy to, to work. Yeah. With. And I think too, if I remember correctly, what little I know of the Connors, it's got all basically all of the cast except Roseanne. Yeah. yeah. Like John Goodman, Laurie Metcalf, mm-hmm. um, the original actress that played Becky, um, who's back Sarah Gilbert. I think yep. even the kid that played DJ is around. He's back. So like, yep. That helps because I know, like you're mentioning Archie's place. I think Archie Bunker is like the only character that crossed over. Yeah. So it's a little much. tougher when you're taking, it would be like doing, you know, just having Dan and that's right. It, and you don't have any of the kids mm-hmm. and now you've got to create a whole new situation there. So that, that would be a little bit different, but yeah, it, it's impressive that it's lasted five seasons and gets picked up for a sixth. I have no idea if it's any good. I haven't watched it, but um, they're putting money behind be doing it. Decent enough. Yeah. To, to, the, the bits and pieces I've seen here, I haven't watched it, like watched it, watched it, but you know, I've seen clips and stuff here and there, um, you know, and it still carries the same torch. It's still that storyline of, you know, we're not, we're living paycheck to paycheck, doing what we can day by day um, kind of storyline, which in this day and age of television, there's only so much of that, really. You know, you think about the big popular shows, there's, you know, every fireman cop show awesome. in every city these days you've got lawyer shows and then you've got you know freaking yellowstone like they ain't blue collar at all if you've seen mm-hmm. that um they're cowboys but that's a whole different thing um so i think there there's something about roseanne and the connors being down to earth that a lot of people see like we said see themselves in yeah. Well, it was a show that very much spoke to like middle America. It was mm-hmm. because most, I mean, typically sitcoms, where do they get set? They're either in LA or they're in New York. Um, and you might get one that's set. They're usually set in a city, Chicago. We look at perfect strangers was in Chicago. Um, you know, you had all these sitcoms that were set in cities. This was set in a suburb outside mm-hmm. of a city and it dealt with stuff that like my family related to it because it was people with jobs that like my parents had mm-hmm. and you know situation going to going to places or dealing with situations that were very familiar to everybody in my area so it was very popular here um i remember it's jumping the shark moment was when roseanne won the lottery mm-hmm. i think it was like the last season she wins the lottery and it completely changed the whole show and it was no longer this family living paycheck to paycheck and and just scraping by and all of this. Now suddenly they had money and all this kind of, and it completely changed things. And that's, I think a big part of what kind of led to its downfall in its ninth season and also yeah. why they retconned a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for those who haven't seen it, like they definitely Bob Newhart, the 
last episode of that <laughs> that scene. Yeah. So, um, wasn't it, it? Didn't they do in that last episode of season nine? Like Dan died, and the whole the whole thing with Roseanne winning the lottery and something I think also to do with the pregnancy or the the kid was like a dream. Her dealing with her grief of Dan dying or something. Yeah, she was. It was basically her writing something. Yes. That's what so. it was. Because I, I always forget she was an aspiring, she wanted to be a writer, mm-hmm. but never made that work. So she was just working whatever job she could. Completely yeah. forgot that was part of her character at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, you gotta, once you figure out you've gone the wrong direction, ha- having her win the lottery is like introducing the new baby in the latter season. You're like, oh, shoot. Now we yeah. got a baby on set all day. What do we do with this? Yeah. It's the same mm-hmm. kind of deal. It's like opens up a wide array of stories you could tell. But they're not the stories you should tell. It's it's the wrong ones. Mm-hmm. You've gone a direction yeah. that you can't can't put that back in the in the bottle very easy, and you got to do mental gymnastics to get your footing again. Yeah, mm-hmm. until you revive it years later and just say, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff didn't matter. So. Yeah, it's been long enough. People forget. <laughs> Whatever. Mm-hmm. Basically, TV. yeah, yep. So we're talking about season six when they recast. The eldest daughter, Becky, who was initially played by Leslie Gorenson. Yep. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's a crazy thing. Roseanne was the second thing she ever auditioned for, ever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and That's crazy. Fun. Um, so, and when we got to season five, she decided she wanted to further her education. And the producers of the show were like, okay. Like it was totally an amical split. There was no like behind the scenes drama for this at all. They mm-hmm. just slowly were writing her out um, of yeah, stuff here and there. Mm-hmm. That was the storyline where she eloped. Like she left, she dropped out of school and eloped to Minneapolis or whatever with her boyfriend. Mark. Yeah. 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 Um, but once she was gone, the producers and writers were like, well, we still want to tell some Becky stories. So let's just recast her and that's what they did they recast her with sarah chalk um who i recognized but i wasn't sure from where i recognized her and i had to look it up <laughs> scrubs okay. scrubs yep. yeah immediately like, as soon as i was made. like holy cow because i i was not i didn't know this ran 98 to 97 so mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, she looks too young, and what is Scru- she was young in Scrubs. Yes, she was also young in Scrubs, because it came along mm-hmm. not very long after Roseanne yeah. ended. It's hard right. to imagine. Time you, is a weird thing. You forget how babyface they were at the beginning of Scrubs. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Compared to, you know, you see them today and giving interviews and stuff, or talking about stuff. I remember Sarah Chalk on How I Met Your Mother. Um, wow. She was one of the Ted's girlfriends <laughs> later on. In a very They're, interesting storyline. They were like all in their early 20s when Scrubs started. Because I remember Zach Braff mm-hmm. was, was I think he was 25 when he made um, the the New Jersey movie. Why can't I remember? Yeah. Garden State. And he'd yeah. been on Scrubs for a few years before that. So how, wow, mm-hmm. I've done nothing mm-hmm. with my life. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're um, just not an actor, that's all. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the only difference, really. Mm. <laughs> Um, you know, and it was funny because uh, Sarah Chalk played Becky for the remainder of the sixth season, then she continued through the seventh season. Once it got to the eighth season, Gorenson, Lessa Gorenson, was able to play Becky again, so she just came in and did that. But then she had scheduling issues because of school, and Chalk came back in for a few episodes here and there. Oh, jeez. Um, and then when the series was renewed for the ninth season, Gorenson, who was still dealing with school, uh, decided to like, no, I'm not going to screw this up. Y'all just go with Sarah. Uh, so Sarah Chalk finished out the ninth season entirely. And that was her last appearance as the role of Becky. She did come back for the revival as a new character, Andrea, who attempts to enlist Becky as a surrogate mother. <laughs> and that's, a- that's pretty meta. I like that. That's a, well, and, that's all. and what I read, <laughs> and I, I kind of want to find the episode. I read that they, they even comment that they both like they look a lot alike. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, there was that's... a there's there was a fun meta moment in this episode too. 
Yeah, I would we'll love go- to see the contracts for this situation. Where it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're just gonna bring the other actress back. See you later, Sarah Chalk. You're kind of fired. Oh wait, hold on a minute. Let's bring you in for this episode. Like what? It's like an yeah. understudy in theater, but yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, that's the interesting one to me like it's one thing when you recast the character and then maybe like Gorenson can come back like oh i've got time and i can come back and, and play the role again mm-hmm. but then to have like oh she's gonna miss a few episodes so we'll just have sarah chalk do those yeah, and the- no one's gonna notice so like season eight is like a, a coin flip who's gonna be becky which becky are we getting yeah yep. young blonde girl young blonde girl they're all the same right, exactly. right. i mean right <laughs> i'm being facetious don't write your emails of course <laughs> yeah. So, so this particular episode, we've got the big storyline is that it's Dan's football reunion of twenty five years, um, and we start off with them in the kitchen talking. Apparently, Becky and Mark are coming in for this thing, um, which again, it's been a while since we've seen Becky. This is episode nine of season six. Um, so we haven't seen Becky for a while since she left with Mark. Um, and if you did not know Roseanne, if you had not known this series before, Stephen, Roseanne was not a fan of Mark at all. I picked up on that as the episode went along (laughs) and started to read between the lines a little, Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, so Dan's trying to make sure everything stays good for his reunion with his bites. Doesn't want Roseanne fighting with Mark. Roseanne's like, okay, fine. Um, but before we get too far though, can, can we quickly touch on the fact that Dan is having a reunion for 25 years from his high school football team? Mm -hmm. It's not a high school reunion. No one cares about high school. So it's just the like half a dozen guys that are, that would show up for the football team. Mm-hmm. And I find that interesting uh, because it's a high school football team. It's not like it was a post school thing. Cause my dad does get together with some of his old baseball buddies every year. Uh, and they, they go to a baseball game, a minor league game here in town and they get together. But these were all guys that played post high school mm-hmm. and like post college together, you know, when they were in their twenties mm-hmm. and, and everything. So that kind of like, I get that a little bit more than just like this one section of the high school football team getting together but it's outside of the school itself i thought that was uh, that was fairly interesting well this is what it looks like when you peak in high school travis uh these gentlemen didn't get very far after that is my only guess because if you went to college and did things of substance or played college football maybe you'd (laughs) forget about high school but if you know if you didn't Mm -hmm. make it you know if your best days were high school then this is the kind of reunion you get and this was why there were only like five or six of them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. And again, talking about a blue collar family, like probably a small town where mm-hmm. high school was it. Like there's still like my, um, well, I'm just saying there's a lot of people that just go to high school football games for yeah. the heck of it. Having nobody that they know in that school, but high school football is the thing to go and do and watch on the weekends and stuff. So now I want, I want there to be uh, a crossover with married with children. And one of their chief rivals was Al Bundy's high school (laughs) and have Dan's school be the team that Al Bundy threw four touchdowns against. Oh, that'd have been because that was always the thing. He always talked about his four touchdown game. That would be mm-hmm. perfect. I mean, I know they were on different networks and all that, but like, I want that to exist because it was they were they were both in Chicago area. Yeah, this is, this is the Uncle Uncle Rico situation. You just you're always <laughs> reliving <laughs> reliving that one game. Yep. Put me in, Coach. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've I've just got to say something about the intro for Roseanne being pretty much the same throughout the series. You know they updated it for the actors and stuff but just that intro little harmonica mm-hmm. little saxophone little guitar and just going around the kitchen and everybody coming to the table mm-hmm. um and then roseanne having something to laugh at at the end like, oh yeah i i, I, really, about, I didn't dude. watch a lot of this but i did remember this intro because it is iconic of the dinner table mm-hmm. and the camera just rotating around yeah. i liked that and then i 
it might have been the eighth or ninth season where they updated it and they had like a morph effect. Yeah. Where they would show like they would show Roseanne and have her kind of morph into the different, you know, over the years how she changed. And it was amazing how much like her and John Goodman changed over the years, how different yeah. they looked by the end of the show, you know, in nine mm -hmm. years and watching like the kid um Michael Fishman who played DJ growing up and mm -hmm. all of that. That was kind of a cool if they were gonna change it at all, it was a cool way to do it. Yeah. Of everybody, he grew like a freaking weed. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. Um and it was interesting. I had forgotten, like it didn't hit me until you know, seeing that in the credits is like Tom Arnold's executive producer. Oh, this is Roseanne Barr Arnold right now. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um uh I think they actually divorced and separated just the next year after this one. So um just interesting tidbit there. Mm -hmm. Um then we get back in there. Uh Dan they convinced Dan to give his speech to them. And his speech is not very long at all. <laughs> or very good. Yeah. Just like, hey, hey guys. Um and then I, I love that it's an old it's a grown man that has a pimple on his forehead to deal with. <laughs> because there are times where i'm like how do i have a freaking pimple right there right now oh yeah i'm like after pizza friday what? it's almost guaranteed mm -hmm. <laughs> so um and then becky and mark show up and we get our first viewing of sarah chalk as becky and nobody bats an eye they just go right with it um but then uh, not long after that, we see um, Mark wanting to go out with his friends. And Becky's like, yeah, I'll just stay here with the family. Um, and then they have some words, and he leaves. And Becky's not happy. And then Roseanne and Jackie are in the kitchen overhearing it, of course. And uh, Roseanne immediately is like, oh, he's cheating on her. Mm -hmm. Just immediately jumps to um, thinking... He's cheating, so she's gonna try and catch him <laughs> somehow. Um, then we cut <clears throat> to whatever ceremony they have, they had, and everybody's coming over to the Connor's house uh for the hanging out, eating food and hanging out. Um and I thought By it was way, funny. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it's one of my favorite things about uh sitcoms is all of everything has to happen at the house oh yeah mm -hmm. they, they they can't afford to build sets anywhere else so we don't get to see any of that it's just we get to see the before and the after and mm -hmm. it can take place at the house and yep. that's right that's the best part or if there's outdoor shots that are free or sponsored yes. by disney uh mm -hmm. which yes. is an advertisement for disney world that, that we'll get in there that, one day everybody listening we'll do on location it's coming it's coming oh, yeah. yep and that's that's always a special thing. It's like once a season you get that. Every, sure. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. everything is there. Yeah. So we get Dan and the rest of his football buddies talking about their various sports injuries. <laughs> and then Roseanne's got a buddy in and talk about how she gave birth to a human child. That was okay. that was a very good joke and a very yeah, good delivery. Mm -hmm. so, with a dislocated shoulder, that's real pain. She's like, one time I went to the hospital and they cut me open and removed a human being. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It is so good. Yeah, I agree. We got nothing on that. Nothing we could ever nope. say. No. Yeah. No. No. And uh, what was it? I was talking about it at some point, just how it's scientifically proven that women can actually handle pain better than men. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cool conceding to that. Absolutely. I'm convinced that men handle pain worse when they don't understand where it came from. <laughs> like, if you just, like, if I have a headache, I'm just on the floor. But if I stub my toe, you know, it hurts and I'm angry. Mm -hmm. But, like, if I have a cold or something, I'm, I'm whiny about it. <laughs> I don't handle pain that I don't understand. Yes. I'm pleading the fifth, fifth on that one. <laughs> um, so everybody's at the house and then Mark and Becky apparently have another little shouting match and Mark storms out. Uh, Roseanne at this point is trying not to meddle. She's decided, you know what? 
going to be the bigger person. Going to say, I'm here for you, Becky, if you need, and just let it be. To which Becky responds well to, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, right after that, she's like, you know, mom, if 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 I left Mark, could I live here? And Roseanne's like, well, sure. And Becky's like, it's just a hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to Becky and Darlene talking it up in uh, the girls' room. Um, with the shoes on the bed. With the shoes on the bed. Man, that bothered me so much. That was my <laughs> Scott Johnson gross thing moment. I'm like, oh, gosh, they walk everywhere, and she's on the bed with mm-hmm. her shoes. Yep. So, <laughs> um, again, if you hadn't been watching the series, um, Becky married Mark, and they eloped, and they left to do their own thing. Darlene had gone to college. She had broken up with her boyfriend, David. Or so we thought. Because Becky's at asking her, like, was it hard to leave David? And she's like, yeah, I guess you could say that, except we're living together in Chicago. Um, to which I find interesting. Becky's like, what are you talking about? You shouldn't do that. And, you know, trying to warn her off living together and stuff. I'm like, okay, pot, kettle, <laughs> much. Okay. By the way, it should be noted, uh, Stephen, if you don't, you may not remember this, but David... Darlene's boyfriend was the younger brother of Mark. Oh, so okay. Did not the know sisters that. were dating a pair of brothers. In the oh, show. And, yeah. And David in the show was played by Johnny Galecki. Yes, mm-hmm. I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he was Mark's younger brother. Okay. I get it. That's always a great way to do it. You know, just keep siblings mm-hmm. with siblings. Just makes uh-huh. it easy. Yeah. Family reunions are easier. <laughs> Christmases, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you can carpool yeah, pretty much <laughs> yeah. so then we cut back to the reunion party and the fellows apparently have a box of old stuff that they've been hanging on to for 25 years because that's what you do put stuff in a box and don't bring it out until later um this i thought was going to be the what gross steven out the most moment by the way oh the shoes. yeah the shoes on the bed i get but they had they had hair from 25 years ago the box. hair, the, yeah. yes, hair with, with underwear. Mm-hmm. Hair and when it's not on someone's head underwear. or face is <laughs> mm-hmm. is not the not what you want. No. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then I, I love the pulling out of the underwear, and Roseanne immediately like, "What the heck, <laughs> Dan? We need to have a conversation because we both know that's not my underwear." And they go and talk in the kitchen, and Dan's like, "Look, I got it from my mom." <laughs> I needed something. Please Just let me have. I took them. Please let me have this. And Roseanne's like, "You can have this, but you're gonna owe me big time." Dan's like, and that was yeah, that was that B plot the whole time. Mm-hmm. Is Dan mm-hmm. like desperately wanting it to seem as though he has a good, healthy marriage and family, and like he's better than this guy that he was mm-hmm. a rival with in high school, and like you know that he's got a great relationship with DJ. And DJ is going to be a football player and all the, you know, mm-hmm. uh, rah, 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 masculine Dan stuff. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was ridiculous, but it made me laugh quite a bit. Yeah. Then we come back to Mark and yell, Becky come in yelling. Um, and then we kind of get the heart to heart with Roseanne. Where um, Becky confesses that Mark lost his job. And Becky actually quit school so that she could get a job and is supporting them. And Mark's actually working to restore a car that's somehow going to bring in money later on. Um, And it's all this stuff that Roseanne's like, wait, so I need to feel sorry for Mark now because he was actually the victim in this kind of thing. And that, He's actually trying to do something and that, okay. <laughs> um, and Which, so that was a nice subversion of the expectation because for most of the series that Mark was involved in leading up, like he was very much the kind of outsider punk kid. Mm-hmm. And that's why Becky fell for him was he was the bad boy. 
And that was a big reason why Roseanne didn't like him and Dan too, because he wasn't the clean cut kid that they wanted their daughter to, to date. And then she ran off with him. And so Roseanne just wants any, you know, any excuse at all. And I love that line. It's like, because you're making me defend Mark. Yeah. Like, that's yep. what's upsetting her. <laughs> yeah. Is that he turns out to not be a terrible, the terrible person she wants him to be. Right. And, you know, Roseanne and talking to Becky is like, you still love him. You can't just leave him because things get tough. That's not the way you handle the situation. Mm -hmm. And so then she's like, okay, why don't you guys just move in with us until you can get on your feet? We'll work it out somehow. And I love the, the line at the end of this scene was like, aren't you going to have to check with dad on this? <laughs> And Roseanne's like, I'm not going to have to check with dad for anything for a very, very long time. <laughs> it was a really good way to wrap that up. It was so great. Um, <laughs> and they hug it out and they close out. And then we get one last scene. This scene is why I picked this show and this recasting. Because I remembered this above everything else. It was very good. They're sitting on the couch, apparently watching Bewitched. <laughs> when they recast Darren and they have a little that... conversation about it you know Roseanne's complaining why in the world would they do that and um, Jackie's like oh, you know it was super popular they had the money they could do it, and do it and get away with it and then Becky chimes in I like the new Darren <laughs> and everybody and gives her a dirty look yeah. What's great about this scene is this you could tell was shot in front of a studio audience because mm -hmm. of the pauses between the lines. Because mm -hmm. you get Roseanne's line of like, I can't believe they recast that Darren. And then it's laughter. And Laurie Metcalf like has to wait. Oh, and yeah, wait yeah. And wait. And yeah. then she's finally like, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, they just figured they could get away with it, you know? And I, I love the meta humor of that. And just to everybody, like Dan's reactions as he just stares at Sarah Chalk when she's like, I like the new Darren. I think I like him better. Yep. <laughs> it's very, very funny. It's so good. This is, and this is something they kept doing in the series <laughs> when they were going, like we talked about them going back and forth between Gornson and Chalk. It became a running gag. So when uh, Gornson came back, her first reappearance was marked with, where the hell have you been? From several of the cast members in character. <laughs> um, when Chalk comes back sporadically through season eight, uh, Roseanne would say, aren't you glad you're here this week? <laughs> so they definitely had some meta humor fun with that whole thing. Um, but yeah, that that last scene is really what I remember most because I didn't know what Bewitched was at the time and I uh, had to have it explained to me. And then like on this side of it, after doing this show and watching Bewitched and talking about all this kind of stuff. I appreciate it that much more and can only imagine what the people who grew up on Bewitched and stuff and then watching this show, how much of a gag that was for them. Oh yeah. It was awesome. Might as well lean into it. You know, yeah. you're not hiding it from anybody. Mm -hmm. No, no. Anybody, no. a show that popular, everybody's going to recognize and notice it. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to just point it out and be like, yeah, no, we did that. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. Well, um, you know, what's was fun about this show is John Goodman, man. Like he's a movie star to me because I've always seen him in movies, but watching him on Roseanne, this is back in a time where TV movie stars didn't do TV, TV people. If they made it to the movies, it was like, you're on thin ice. Maybe you'll stay here. Maybe and never go back to TV. John Goodman just goes wherever he wants. He's like, I'm, I'm a movie star. I'll go back and do the Connors, and then I'll do other movies yeah. while I'm doing the Connors. And it's just like, yeah. he's, just, he's just so, he moves so effortlessly between everything. He's so good. He's so, yeah, I love and, it. And I think, yeah, I think part of that too, like John Goodman was never going to be, unfortunately, because of Hollywood and how it is, he was mm -hmm. never going to be a leading man. Sure. Yeah. So, so he was he was able to just do work whenever he wanted. So he could be on a sitcom like Roseanne for nine years during the late 80s into the late 90s and then take time to go, you know, hang out with his friends, the Coen brothers, and do a bit part, you know, do a small, smaller part in one of their movies mm -hmm. and show up for a few days and shoot that. And then he could go do this. And 
He did that you know, in he, the middle of Roseanne. Yeah. I mean, he was really, able to yeah. do that a lot, which is uh-huh. great. Yeah, it's just it's just great. I love that guy. Was, he's just the best. Yeah, one of my favorite he's actors so ever. Funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the, one of the other things I always remember him from being the West Wing nerd I am is he's in there in a pretty pivotal role for a few episodes. Oh wow! Um, and he just comes in. Gosh, you know. And then then he 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 shows up uh, one or two other times as that character, and it's great. But and then. <laughs> it's funny he got on the Aaron Sorkin train because right after that he was on Studio 60 as a judge out in the middle of uh, I think Pahrump, Nevada for a couple episodes and it was great um, he's just got this thing about him mm-hmm. he's got a presence about him and an ability he's got a lot of range right because mm-hmm. he, can oh, yeah. play, he can do dramatic he can do funny he can do demonstrative he's got the size and the build for that I mean he's 6'2 and he was a very he's a very large man even after he lost a bunch of weight he's still a big guy so he could play intimidating he can play vulnerable um one thing i noticed watching this episode was how much better of actors everyone around Roseanne Barr was yes and Roseanne wasn't mm-hmm. bad per se but there were definite times where you could tell she was like pausing to remember what her next line was. Well, mm-hmm. she's the, she's the sitcom comedian, you know. It, you're a comedian. You do stand up. Here's your sitcom. There mm-hmm. was a trend for a while. You just go grab oh, a, yeah. a comedian and put them in a sitcom. And I mean, right. some of them are great, and some of them can say lines relatively convincing. But there's always almost a a delivery and a wait for them. It's almost like when they say the lines, they're waiting for the next one or or ready for the reaction to what they said. Whereas like an Mm -hmm. actor, an actor who does the acting, the thespian lives in the moment, Mm -hmm. you know, he's not waiting on the reaction. He's living in as a person in that scene at that moment. And it's, it makes it, it does make a difference. Like when you understand or you read about the craft a little bit, you start to see those, those differences show a little bit more. And yeah, I think- and I just feel like given that this was season six, by this point she had been acting long enough that you would think she would have picked up on some of that. And I just wonder, I I wonder how much effort she put into kind of learning the craft of acting as opposed mm-hmm. to because the character is based on you know her stand up mm-hmm. and she's writing a lot of that. And I get that, and it's fine. And there are moments where her deliveries are fantastic. I mean, some of the jokes are great, but then there's some other moments where you just like you can tell there are moments you can tell she is trying to act as opposed to you flip that around. You look at Laurie Metcalf, who's mm-hmm. barely in this episode or, but uh, her or John Goodman. Yeah. And it's like, they're not acting. They are those characters. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I think it just comes down to what, you know, what we're talking about. Roseanne is a comedian. That's mm-hmm. what she was. That's what she, she acted in this show that was about her comedy. Uh, since the, show and other than the revival i can't think of too much stuff she's acted in much compared to everybody else on the show um you know we talked about john goodman we talked about sarah chalk being on scrubs and so many other things since then laurie metcalf still kicking ass in all kinds of acting jobs these days um i think about laurie metcalf sarah gilbert and um Johnny Galecki all, all on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Yeah. And how much they were in that. Um, so, yeah, it's just. I, and I think it's OK to say some people just aren't made for acting. Oh, sure. Roseanne was one of those people. I think she did a great job with what she could. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, it is interesting when you see somebody who is a comedian compared to actual actors and seeing which ones can rise to that bar or not. Yeah, and you you can tell. Like, what you're talking about this today, me and, me and my wife watched an M. Night Shyamalan movie, Knock at the Cabin. It's got Dave Bautista in it, you know? And we were talking about mm-hmm. the difference between, like, Dwayne Johnson and Dave Bautista. Both wrestlers, both come into the same medium, but with a completely different approach. Dwayne Johnson wants to be awesome, you know? Yep. Action, 80s-level action star. Dave Bautista wants to be an actor, you know? And you can yeah. tell by their project choices and what they want to do, where they want to strip Batista and Blade Runner 2049. You're like, dang, that guy's got mm-hmm. some yeah. nuance. Dwayne Johnson would never have nuance. 
doesn't need mm-hmm. it, you know? I just want to punch and somebody. I will say, like, Dwayne Johnson has some acting ability, and he's done it yeah. in a few movies, but for the most part, he wants to be a mo- He He has gone the route of being a movie star. Yeah, sure. He's mm-hmm. not going to be... He's, he's doing big, action-packed things. That's what he enjoys doing. Mm-hmm. And Batista wants to be known as an actor first, and so he's... You know, he's going in that direction. I think John Cena can do a little bit of both of those. I think he's yeah. a better actor than people want to give him credit for. I would um, totally agree. Agreed. But yeah. it's it's hard when when you when you come like when you come from a thing like professional wrestling, which is acting but also stunt work, mm-hmm. and you get pigeonholed into, you know, you can only do this one thing, and it it doesn't help much too that the act the wrestlers that have tried to go into acting before them were. I mean, look, I love Andre the Giant, but he was limited in what he could do. It's so good Hulk Princess Hogan, Bride, though. Come on. He was very good. He was very yeah. good. But Hulk Hogan is a terrible actor. I mean, Suburban Commando is not in the top actor. 10 of your favorite movies ever? Like, what are you even doing? Not Three ninjas attack at High Rise Mountain or whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where because they they've had to break through that shell. Like some wrestlers have done better than others. Um, but it's, it's very interesting to me to see these actors that they want to be known for their acting. And then some of them are just like, I just want to do, you know, I want to have fun, make you know movies. Adam Sandler has that range to do that. But then he also just likes to get together with his friends, get a bunch of money to make a movie and go on vacation. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And more power to him. He's Why able not? To do it. Like that's yeah. fine. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have no hate on those folks, but yeah, mm-hmm. I guess yeah, the same. Like it said, all that to get you know the comedian range is the same thing. You've got your Roseanne's mm-hmm. on your one side, and then I don't know another one. <laughs> I can't think of anybody off the top of my head well, that strikes I mean, me as like the actor man. I mean, Robin Williams got started. Oh as a shoot, comedian, yeah, okay, but, yeah. Like, there's he, a he's he was an actor, and he oh, wanted yeah. to be an actor. It's I think he wanted Robin to have Williams fun, is the like, bar. Yeah. Oh, that everyone aspires to. I think, I think, I think of Robin Williams, and then I think of Jim Carrey. Yeah, going from comedy to acting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's, and then I think he's yeah, Adam Sandler's on there. From around the same time, Tim Allen was yeah. a comedian, had you know home improvement, and then went on to do some other stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Did okay and stuff. Galaxy Quest. I mean, come on. He never hit that. Star Trek movies. Okay. Oh yeah, but he never hit that drama, like that that level of acting no. prowess where he could. Bl- he always had that sitcom dad vibe in the Santa mm-hmm. Clauses and everything. But like, I remember a story about Alan Rickman didn't, didn't get along with Tim Allen on Galaxy Quest, and uh, at one point t- the director kept pushing Tim at this really emotional scene to really give it his all and cry and stuff, like give this moment what it deserved. And at the end of it, he's like, I think I need to go for my trailer a, a while. And somebody said, I wonder what's wrong with Tim. And Alan Rickman goes, I think he just experienced acting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's that's good. That's really yeah. good. <laughs> I, do, I, I do enjoy sometimes when you get like actors who snipe at each other a little bit. There's the famous one of, uh, is it Lawrence Olivier? Talking to Dustin Hoffman. Uh, Dustin Hoffman asking him about, you know, for Marathon Man. And asking him something, and, and Olivia's like, "Have you tried acting, dear?" Boy? <laughs> you know, because because Hoffman is so method, yeah, in mm-hmm. everything that he do, and I just love that. Like that just cracks me up. It's great. Um, but that was Roseanne. Yeah, to bring it back. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Audie. <laughs> um, you know, I do what I can. Reel us back in. Um. So yeah, Roseanne, a heck of a show. Mm-hmm. Heck of a recasting with Becky. Um, uh, you know, if if you haven't seen it before, go watch it. Like this, the original series is all on Peacock right now. You got to pay for premium, but like, mm-hmm. spend five bucks for a month, you get Roseanne and everything. And then I think the the Connors and stuff is on Hulu right now. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a weird does. that's a weird split. But Hulu and Disney and all that's all the same now. Please yeah, it, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that's a whole nother topic for conversation. <laughs> yeah. Please fix it. So that's it for Roseanne. Next week we get Steven's pick. Um oh wait, before yeah, I do, do that, did we have any response 
uh, feedback or anything for Roseanne this week? I didn't um, see any for Roseanne myself. Okay. Nope. My mom said she liked Roseanne. Uh, that's, <laughs> I got that feedback from texting yeah. and go, hey, did you like Roseanne? So that's that's what I've got as far as <laughs> feedback. Go. That's Perfect. all I can bring you today. No, okay. <laughs> so I will say, I, I will say Roseanne was Roseanne was a show that wasn't afraid to tackle heavier subjects. Mm-hmm. And whether or not you like Roseanne Barr uh, or or not, like I think it's a show if you're into sitcoms and you're into sitcoms that kind of don't mind going places, it was it was a a, a show that that you know was somewhat fearless in that way. And mm-hmm. it kind of, I mean, it, it reflects her. Like Roseanne Barr was not afraid to do things and deal with, she dealt with consequences in 2018, yep. but she wasn't afraid to do that. And the show by extension wasn't afraid either. There were a lot of uh, episodes where things got heavy. And mm-hmm. you know, that was also just like, you know, I learned that John Goodman was hilarious. I also learned that he could, he could be very dramatic at times too. And they dealt with alcoholism. They dealt with abuse. They dealt with, with stuff on that. Yeah. And again, it was, it was the kind of show that growing up where I did my family and people that I knew could identify with that because we were in that Midwestern type of situation. Mm-hmm. So it's worth a watch. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. For sure. But next week, Steven's picking something for us. What you got for us, Steven? I am. Thanks to you guys for talking about this. Because this was a tough this was a tough one for me. I was trying to decide where am I gonna go? What's the most what's the thing that resonates with me that also had a casting change? So you know what matters most to me, you guys? You know what matters most? Family matters is what I'm Ooh. saying. Uh so we are going back to TGI Friday. Uh Family Matters. Uh we're gonna watch Season nine, season season nine, episode fifteen, uh, where Harriet was replaced by a new actress at the end of Family Matters. Uh, wild situation, interesting story. Uh, but we're gonna go there next week. So watch uh, season nine, episode fifteen. Crazier for you. I had to find one where the actor, the new actress, was featured uh, quite you know heavily because there were there were only a handful of episodes and. It's all tying up the end of the series, so it's all Steve Urkel mm-hmm. and Laura doing stuff, you know, yeah. going to space right. and crazy. Family <laughs> Matters was a trip in the last like three seasons. It just it went nuts, oh, yeah. y'all. It got it did. Yeah. It got real crazy. So what? we'll learn a little about that. Once once Urkel got super popular, it was it was all over. I had a a, a Steve Urkel pull string doll. He pulled the string and he said stuff. <laughs> Like I had a Pee Wee Herman one and a Steve Urkel one. If I still had them today, I would not. Nice. I would have a bigger pickup. That's what I'm saying. I, I think I had a Pee Wee Herman one, but Steve Urkel. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, it'll be interesting too to talk because not only are we going to be tackling a show that did recasting, but it's also a show that drastically changed over the course of its oh yeah series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like because you know to to give it a reference with Roseanne, like Roseanne was the same show start to finish. It got a little weird with the winning the lottery, but it mm-hmm. was still a show about that family and about and centered around Roseanne and Family Matters did not do that. Family yeah. Matters very drastically changed because of popularity of a specific character. Well I'm sure Yeah. Changed who the focus of the entire show was on. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. talk yeah. about that we'll talk about that next week. Cause who started that show and who ended that show is the main character, two completely different things. I know Audie knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, throw back to the yeah, but anyway, also, yeah. I, I also get throw out the nugget that it's a spin off, too. So, yeah, yeah, it is. And which character we'll spun it off? It. We'll find out next week. Next week, we we'll will. talk about that. Um, but thank you everybody for joining us in the chat. Thank you to everybody listening to us. If you would like to give us a piece of your mind, let us know mm-hmm. what you thought about Roseanne, let us know what you think about Family Matters. You can hit us up. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at Those Day Show. You can email us. Those were the day show at gmail.com. Or you can come hang out with us live Mondays at nine when we record twitch.tv slash two dorks TV. Uh, and that's the number two dorks TV. <laughs> uh, like I said, we're here Mondays around nine ish Eastern PM. We'd love for you to come hang out. 
in the chat. Tell us your stories. Tell us what you thought of the episodes. Uh, yeah. And we just would love to hear from you. We, we love hearing from you guys and mm-hmm. love you having an impact on this show as much as we do. So oh, definitely, yeah. definitely hit us up. Um, but for Travis, for Steven, for Amy, who was not here, I'm Audie, and this has been Those Were the Days, and we'll see you next week for some Family Matters. All right. I completely forgot to mention one of the things I noticed during the show was, was uh, the the when they're sitting around the table at the beginning. Um, and